and here we are to cap up true bugs for you. So as I mentioned before, some of our true bug friends have pretty intense sounding names. So Jason, why don't you introduce us to this friend right here? All right, this one's a little uh, fluffier in its name. This is called the assassin bug. So cuddly. Also, <laughs> they're labeled in the back as hot, which yes. means that they're, uh, you know, they're venom well, venomous. just like the aquatic ones, these are predatory. They're basically the land version of our aquatic true bugs. Um, so assassin bugs are a pretty big family. We have a lot of species around here. Things like the wheel bug, which has kind of a wheeled crest on its back. We have uh, bee assassin bugs, like the dead specimen over here. Um, we have the leafhopper assassin bug, a green one. But um, these ones from Africa, called two-spotted assassin bugs, are a lot larger and have much more potent venom. So the bites of these are said to be excruciatingly painful. However, they are not aggressive. They can spit their venom in rare instances as a defense and aim for the face of an oncoming predator, but as you can see, this one does not want to bite. It just wants to crawl forward. So it doesn't have to bite, though, to like shoot its venom out at you, right? Nope. And in addition to spitting it, they also have what is called pagidial glands, which are they produce a toxic uh, kind of a foul-smelling odor. And that's why a lot of things in this group of true bugs are called stink bugs. And most true bugs can produce this, especially in the suborder Heteroptera, which includes assassin bugs, aquatic true bugs, stink bugs, plant bugs, squash bugs. There's a lot of them. That's so perfect, because I was actually about to ask you a question about stink bugs. So oh, yes. I never knew that these little green guys down here were stink bugs. I always thought that stink bugs were those big black beetle looking insects that I see when I walk my dogs at the bosque. So yeah, here they're known as stink bugs. Um, in a lot of places in the Southwest, they're called that because they're also chemically defended, but they're actually beetles. They're uh, in the darkling beetle family, so they have lots of names like skunk beetle, desert stink beetle, stink bug. Um, there's lots of different species, especially here in the desert southwest. Most are black and will stick their abdomen in the air to show that, hey, I have nasty stuff for you. So Awesome. So, yeah. Jason, mm -hmm. as we wrap up about true bugs, you have here this piece of cactus oh, yes. with some little fluffy dots on it. And I just need to know what's going on with fluffy dot cactus. So this is another type of true bug here. So this is known as cochineal. And cochineal is a type of scale insect. So scale insects are related to aphids. We've all heard of aphids. Um, between scales and aphids, and there's another thing called a white fly, which is another small true bug. These they can are, get in your house plants, yeah, so and they're hard are, to get rid of. Oh, very hard. Mm -hmm. And they're all closely related, and they are some of the biggest pests in human agriculture, causing <laughs> billions in damages every year because they spread diseases with their little rostrums as they pierce and suck plant juices. However, cochineal heel here, although it can uh, look gross on your cactuses up front, they actually serve a purpose to humans. So inside of this waxy, stretchy ball of weird stuff, oh, and there it is. So they're very fragile. So inside of here, if we can carefully tease it out, is a female cochineal bug. And at this adult stage in her life, her legs are reduced to nothing. Her head is reduced to nothing. She's essentially a little purple blob with a little needle-like mouth part for drinking cactus juice. Um, well, since this one's already mortally wounded, might as well do the uh, coup de gras. I apologize. Whoop. But here you can see this nice reddish dye. And these have been used for centuries to make uh, powdered dyes for dyeing clothes and even food. In fact, um, if you had a Starbucks, I think it was a strawberry flavored something or another. A pink drink. In the 90s, you drank some of this because they used to use it in their coffee. There was a whole scandal about it and they stopped using it because it technically wasn't vegan. But they actually farm these in Mexico and Central America. They're very interesting species, but other scale insects that are related do a lot of damage to plants and basically can you know, cause half of a tree to just wilt overnight. Um, again, very fascinating group full of predators, plant feeders, and just a lot of weird ones too. So. Okay, I have one last question that I have to ask about true bugs because mm -hmm. uh, if you don't know this, I uh, don't like butterflies. I don't like butterflies because of the little like straw that they use to sometimes even drink sweat out of your pores oh, yeah. as a human being. So, and then there's also mosquitoes, right? They're straw drinkers too. So are they or are they not true bugs? They are not. So they're in completely different orders. Um, so on the family tree of bugs, they're actually much more recently evolved than true bugs. So they have a complete metamorphosis. True bugs do not. They hatch out looking like the adults and they just molt to grow, similar to cockroaches, grasshoppers, stick insects. Um, but yeah, you do have a lot of convergent evolution in, well, mm. in life in general. In so you bug, have similar things evolution. happen multiple times where mouth parts will elongate into tube-like structures. Um, 
Yeah, and you have a lot of weird things, especially in the flies with weird mouth parts. So that's something we can get into another time. Yeah, but, awesome. Well, keep mm -hmm. tuning in and learning about bugs. Oh, yeah. There's we have a lot more, more information to cover. <laughs> Bye. Bye.